So if you can slim down a product from being a bit bulky to, to really slim, it looks more appealing, but you also use less uh, resources to make it. Hi, and here we are at the stand of Ligner Energy at uh, Electronica, and I'm with David Milton. David, lovely to see you here. Nice to meet you also. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, uh, supercapacitors, which is uh, the product that Ligner Energy makes. Um, so I wonder if you could talk to me about um, where you find uh, uses for supercapacitors, uh, which kind of market segments, what kind of end products? Absolutely. Um, you know, supercapacitors have been around for, for a long time. Yeah. There are thousands of different kinds and they are used in millions of products. Yeah. So uh, I guess a lot of people will be familiar with the, the traditional sort of cylindrical, absolutely. big heavy metal kind of yeah, uh, absolutely. supercapacitor style. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So our take on this is to make them ultra thin. Uh, so we can have this really thin form factor to use them in space constrained IoT applications. So it could be everything from like active smart cards with fingerprint sensors to electronic shelf labels or indoor climate sensors. But we believe that the IoT applications need to be slimmed down and uh, as that we could use the, the, the materials as, as wise as possible. So if you can slim down a product from being a bit bulky to, to really slim, it looks more appealing, but you also use less uh, resources to make it. It's, and like, it's like with, with, with your mobile phones. Absolutely, the, yes. Yeah. Uh, you compare them to the bricks that we used to have, maybe for those of us who can remember back in the 90, early 2000s, then yeah. yes, it's a very, very different form factor now, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So um, uh, in, in these kind of products like electronic shelf labels, as you mentioned, or smart cards, then um, they currently have a power source that, that perhaps is not a supercapacitor. What, what are they using currently? The most common is to use different kinds of batteries. Right. Uh, and batteries work great, but they have their limitations. They're not as good as with the cycling. Uh, a, a battery would last maybe 800 to 1,000 or maybe 1,500 cycles. And but by a cycle you mean? Yeah, when you charge it up and right. yeah. discharge it. Mm -hmm. and with our, our super caps can reach somewhere around 250,000 cycles. So, so practically, it's never going to wear out. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. And also that, if you use a, like a, a lithium-ion battery, you have some issues with that as well. If you use them in a smart card, then you have the issue with at the end of life of your smart card, your bank will tell you to cut the card in half. If you do that with a lithium cell, it will start a fire. And that's really good. So there's a so there's a real personal safety issue there, but even Absolutely. in even in the other applications, so electronic yeah. shelf labels, for instance, there's still an, an end of life issue. So when it when it's, uh, it comes to be disposed of, there's a battery inside there with yeah. lots of potentially nasty chemicals inside. It's a thing uh, that's not not easy to dispose of. No, ex safely, exactly, and, and, and it's also a cost issue. Uh, if you have uh, an IoT application that could live for 10 years but you need to change the batteries like every third year, that comes with a significant cost. We know that if you send out a maintenance person to change those batteries, that will cost you, um, I would say, 150 to 200 euros for each battery change for each application. Mm. So if you have a few thousand applications out there, it will be a really costly. Yeah. So um, the Ligner Energy kind of alternative to it this then is so it's a, a super thin supercapacitor, but how, how does that work within a system where you're potentially replacing what would previously have been powered by the kind of battery that you've been talking about? Yeah, so when, you need, when you're gonna use them inside of an application, you need to, to harvest energy in some way so you can power the supercap. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of different kinds of, of energy harvesting solutions today. The most common one is to use some kind of indoor light harvesting. Yeah, so, so we've got the solar cell just, just there, the PV cell. Exactly, yeah. so this will harvest the indoor light, which will power the super cap yeah. and make the system work. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but then again, you've got almost um, infi an infinity of, of power. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's basically endless, isn't it? Yeah. But, so from the design engineer's point of view, 
they're used to dealing with a battery, which is, as you say, may, might need replacement. But from the design point of view, it's a fairly simple process, isn't it? You you just put in a battery with the, requ the specified uh, energy capacity and hook it up. That's it. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, how does it work from uh, from the point of view of designing in an energy harvesting system? It, it's, I guess it's a little different of, of a process. Absolutely, it is. But there's a lot of different energy harvesting companies out there that, that work with it. And you have loads of reference designs that you can use. So it will be a quite easy process anyway to, to use a super cap with, with energy harvesting. And you don't need to, to reinvent the, the wheel again, you know. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, uh, here we are. We're, we're we're at your stand. We're looking at uh, this product. But uh, are, are there other alternative solutions out there? If if someone is interested in this supercapacitor kind of uh, solution, are there other other ways that you can go or? Um, how does your product compare to, uh, to, to some, some of the other super thin super capacitors that, that, that are available on the market? Yeah, I would say that we offer one of the thinnest super caps out there. Also that we use sustainable and safe materials. Uh, we have an organic electrolyte in this which makes it much easier and safer to handle for, for an engineer. Uh, and also that we produce them in a roll-to-roll -roll process in Sweden at our uh, facility there, uh, which is, when we produce them in a roll-to-roll, -roll, it makes them really cost-efficient. So even when we pr produce l large volumes, we don't need to, to uh, you know, build a factory in, in Asia or somewhere else. We can keep production in Europe, still very cost-efficient. Uh, so it won't be like any supply chain problems or issues with that. Uh, and also, we can make this really low cost, especially if you compare them with other flat supercapacitors. Yeah. And um, the, the kind of the energy capacity that you can get, I mean, it is a remarkably thin product. Uh, it's small enough to fit in with a smart card form factor, for instance, very comfortably. Um, the kind of energy capacity you're getting in there is, is what? So this larger one is 1.2 farads, right. which is uh, really good for something this same. Uh, and that will work for a lot of uh, different applications. And um, someone who's uh, thinking of um, adopting this solution, so they may be working with a system that's currently got a battery power supply, um, and they that they want to co to consider this option of energy harvesting plus super thin supercapacitor. Yeah. Um, how would they go about uh, uh, kind of making their way in, in this kind of design approach? I, I would tell them to to reach out to us. Um, you, you will find out the data sheets and information at lignaenergy.com. Contact us and we will help you out as much as possible. Very good. All right. Lovely. Thank you very much, David. Lovely Thank you so much. Okay. Great.